two and a half day board meeting, and we're going to we're going to start with our strategic planning committee. And without further ado, I'm going to turn this over this over to our chair, um, Ambassador John Root. You should you should mention new chair. New chair. New chair. <laughs> um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, are we going to take roll? Yes. So can you do that? Okay. Chair Root. Here. Governor Caruncho. Here. Governor Colson. Here. Governor Frost. Governor Frost. Governor Perez. Here. Governor Yost. Here. Governor Webster. Here. Chair Reed, you have a core. Thank you. Can you call we Governor Tripp? I was calling the members of the strategic oh, planning sorry, okay. committee. But Governor Tripp, thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, welcome all the non-committee members. Thank you for all joining in the fun today, um, today and tomorrow. Um, the first item, uh, um, the approval of minutes, the minutes of March 22nd, 2012, have been distributed. Um, are there any comments? If not, can we get a motion to approve the minutes? March 22nd. Let's move it. Okay. Second. Moved and second. Are there any objections? If not, the, it, it's approved. Um, the next item, March or April 5th, 2012 minutes. They were also distributed. Are there any comments? Moved. They're moved. Second. Second. And seconded. Uh, any objections? If not, they're approved. Um, next, we're going to consider the 2012-2013 work plans. Um, and as we get into this, I wanted to make, um, make a few comments. It's amazing when you have to run this meeting how carefully you read these plans. And um, it's obvious there's a lot of thought that went into them. But as we discuss them today and listen to the presentations by the university, I would like all of you to pay attention to a few of the guiding principles that are found in the system strategic plan. In particular, promote an optimal balance between institutional aspiration and the system's public mission. Secondly, seek ways to organize and collaborate for increased efficiencies and a stronger system and state. I also wanted to share with all of you the, um, the wording that was found in our constitutional authority the Board of Governors, as the governing body, is given responsibilities in Section 7D, including, and I quote, defining the distinctive mission of each constituent university and its articulation with free public schools and community colleges, ensuring the well-planned coordination and operation of the system and, avoid, and avoiding wasteful duplication of facilities or programs. And with those comments, um, I'd like to turn this over uh, to Dr. Ignash and ask her to make, the presentation, make a presentation which is going to summarize the process that we're going to be going through over the next two days. Doctor. Thank you, Governor Rood. Before we begin, I thought it would be helpful to take a moment and touch on some of the major decision points that the board will face this week. Starting today and running through tomorrow, the Strategic Planning Committee will hear each university work plan presentation. I'm going to discuss this more in depth in a moment, so let me skip ahead for now. On Thursday morning, Governor Perez's Budget and Finance Committee will take up the university's tuition differential fee requests and the capital improvement fee requests for consideration as part of its agenda. They will vote on each request individually no doubt drawing on what they hear today and tomorrow in the work plan presentations to inform their decisions. As is our practice, all members of the board are welcome to participate in the committee dialogue, but only committee members will actually vote. Those recommendations will go to the full board on Thursday afternoon for final votes. 
It is important to note that board regulations allow for a university board of trustees to appeal the board's decision on the tuition differential fee if they choose to do so. Governor Perez will explain this in greater detail on Thursday morning. Now, let's take a closer look at what to expect, expect from university work plan presentations today and tomorrow. The board is now in the middle stage of what our chancellor calls the three great books. The strategic plan sets the long range system plan and includes goals for degree production, research, and other measures out to the year 2025. The accountability report is the other bookend, but in the middle are these university work plans, and this is really unique. There are not many states that do this. A lot of states have strategic plans, very good ones. A lot of states have accountability reports, also good ones. But this middle piece is very unique. And what it does is it allows for an opportunity to align the goals of the individual institutions with the system as a whole. Here's, a, here's how today's strategic planning committee session on the work plan is organized. First, each university will make a 20-minute presentation, after which the strategic planning committee will have the opportunity to engage with the university. You can ask questions. All members of the board, I need to repeat this, may participate in the Q&A, but only committee members can vote. After each presentation, the committee will move whether to approve the 2012-13 portion only of each university's work plan. Note, if a university's work plan is not approved, the university will be asked to bring revisions to the full board at the September meeting. At its September 2012 meeting, the committee will provide direction and recommendations with respect to the submission of future year's work plans. So let me reiterate, the vote is to approve the 2012-2013 portion of each university's work plan. This committee, the Strategic Planning Committee, will not take up tuition differential or capital improvement fee requests. That's the purview of the Budget and Finance Committee. Here, just to recap real quickly on what we're going to be discussing today, here are the three major sections of the university work plan. The, str the strategy section contains information with regard to university mission, vision, market strategy, strengths and challenges, and three most key initiatives. And this is an opportunity to look and to think about how that aligns with where we're heading in our system-wide strategic plan. There's another section on key performance <coughs> indicators, and it contains information on indicators for all universities, and then another section for indicators for those research universities, and then another section for goals that institutions have identified that are specific to them. There's the third section, which is the operations section. This contains fiscal information, including tuition differential requests, enrollment planning information, and information with regard to um, new program offerings in the future. Board staff met this week um, with board members individually for briefings, and we compiled board members' um, comments and a list of these observations and questions with regard to each university work plan was prepared and there was also a work plan summary document that highlights some of the key performance indicators. That was also repair, prepared at the request of the chair of the Strategic Planning Committee. Those summary document, documents um, provide summary information on sort of the usual suspects on measures, the things that almost every system in the country or state in the country looks at, things like freshman retention, six-year graduation rates, um, I would like, this next part is really important. The purpose of providing side-by-side -side information on these summary documents is not to make comparisons across institutions, but to demonstrate that the data provide the context for 
articulating the uniqueness of one institution from another. This is, and I, this is something that you hear an awful lot today. We have data and we have to be very careful to turn that into information. This next slide illustrates the different student contexts for each of the universities in the state university system. The slide shows the important context that needs to be kept in mind when we're reviewing the, reviewing the data in the university's work plans. This slide shows the percent of Florida residents at each state university system by family income group. So we can easily see that from institution to institution there are big differences. This is an example of the kind of context that needs to be kept in mind. Here's summary data too, and let's just take a moment to look at this. In this slide, we see that several universities have made impressive um, percentage point gains in improving freshman retention, which is one of our metrics in the work plan. And let's see if this pointer works this far. Oh, it doesn't. The top line is a five-year trend of 2000 to 2006 cohort compared to 2006, 2011, and you can see what the trend line is. FAU went up six percentage points in their freshman retention. Um, for example, uh, New College also went up an impressive six percent. However, if you look at UF, their percentage point increase was 1%, but they're already at 95% retention. So you could hardly go up six percentage points. It's these sorts of things to keep in mind. When you look at the data, keep the context in mind. Another thing that typically across the country these days we're comparing is uh, first time in college graduation rates. This is six years or less. Okay, this is another piece of summary data. Most states collect this. The top line again shows the five-year trend for two sets of cohorts. Most institutions improved on this measure. But keep again in mind, context is important. There are issues around financial aid, tuition, the recession, higher cost of living in places where there are urban areas, and the fact that this day and age, students tend to stay in school longer sometimes because there are no jobs out there. This is part of the context. The data are important. The data inform decisions and they should inform good policy. But I can't stress too strongly that you need to be careful in how you interpret the data. Okay. With that, I would like to go ahead and turn this back to Governor Ruth. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions on that? Overview. Um, as you heard, we're only going to be taking up next year's aspect of these work plans, and we've got a motion that's going to clarify that. Um, and that motion reads: Following today's um, following today's meeting, the committee will provide direction and recommendations to each university with regard to future future year's work plans to be discussed at the September 2012 meeting. Um, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Any objections to that motion? Discussion? The motion's approved. And that concludes the, um, um, the overview.